For this question, we want to discuss the continuity of the function, state the interval where the function is continuous, and whether the discontinuities are removable or non-removable. We want to do this for the function f of x equals x squared plus 12x plus 35 over x squared minus 25. So what I'd like to do on this question is to factor the numerator and factor the denominator. We have f of x equals x squared plus 12x plus 35 over x squared minus 25. So if I factor the numerator, I'm looking for factors of x squared, which are x and x, looking for factors of 35, which are 7 and 5, and we're going to have both positives there. In the denominator, we have a difference of squares, and that factors to be x minus 5 and x plus 5. So the reason why I wanted to factor is because I wanted to look for these common factors here. And what these common factors tell me is that if I were to substitute the value of x equals negative 5 into this function, I would get the expression 0 over 0, which is an indeterminate form. And whenever I get 0 over 0, that tells me that I have a hole in the graph at that point. And then if I were to substitute the value of x equals 5, that makes this expression 0. I know that I'm going to get a 0 in the denominator and a non-zero in the numerator. And we have a definition that tells us that when that happens, we end up having a vertical asymptote at that value. So we're going to have discontinuities at both of these values of positive 5 and negative 5. Notice that those are the values that make the denominator 0. So those are going to be discontinuities. But when you have the common factor, it creates one type of discontinuity, a hole in the graph. And when you have a non-zero over zero, it creates this other type of discontinuity, a vertical asymptote. So we have discontinuities. at x equals negative 5 and x equals 5. We need to state the type of discontinuity. We need to say whether these discontinuities are removable or non-removable. And when a discontinuity is removable, that means that you can uh, change one point on that function and create a continuity at that spot. So if you think about the difference between having a hole in the graph, a hole in the graph means that you have one missing spot, and a vertical asymptote, a vertical asymptote means you would have um, the graph maybe going to infinity on one side and negative infinity on the other side. If we were able to fill in one point and create a continuous spot on the graph, then it's removable. And so this one point being filled in, this one value where x equals negative 5 being filled in does create a continuous line versus here with the vertical asymptote, there's no way that one point can fill in the gap between these two parts of the line and create something that's continuous. So for our discontinuities, x equals negative 5 is a removable because it's a whole, and x equals 5 is non-removable because it's a vertical asymptote. 
And then finally, we want to state the interval where the function is continuous. We found the only discontinuities to be at negative 5 and positive 5. And so we're going to say we can draw a picture of that if you need it. So we have negative 5 and positive 5 being discontinuity. So we'll mark them with open circles since the function is not continuous at those values. But it will be continuous everywhere else on the real number line. And we can represent that interval as negative infinity to negative 5 union with negative 5 to 5 union with 5 to infinity. So we've represented each shaded section here with a different interval. So to summarize, this function has discontinuities at negative 5, which is removable in a whole, x equals 5, which is non-removable vertical asymptote, and the function is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to negative 5, union with negative 5 to 5, union with 5 to infinity. For this question, we want to find the derivative using the quotient rule. Simplify after finding the derivative. So not only do we need to calculate the derivative, we want to use algebra to simplify after finding it. The function we have is f of x is 3x minus 7 over x squared plus 4. And we do need to use the quotient rule to calculate the derivative because we have our fraction bar here, and that's what the quotient stands for. And with the quotient rule, if we have a function f over g, we're going to calculate the derivative of that by doing the denominator times the derivative of the numerator minus the numerator times the derivative of the denominator over the denominator squared. So for our calculation, we would do the denominator x squared plus 4 times the derivative of the numerator, which is 3. The derivative of 3x minus 7 is 3, minus the numerator of 3x minus 7 times the derivative of the denominator, the derivative of x squared plus 4 is 2x. And then we want to divide by the denominator squared. So in the numerator, we have some algebra to simplify. I'll use the distributive property, 3x squared plus 12. And then I'm going to distribute this negative 2x to both of those terms, so the negative and the 2x at the same time. So that's going to be a minus 6x squared and a plus 14x all over our denominator squared. And then we'll combine like terms in the numerator to get negative 3x squared. So I've combined negative 6x squared with 3x squared. And then we don't have any like terms with the x and no like terms with the constant. So we've calculated the derivative to be negative 3x squared plus 14x plus 12 over x squared plus 4 squared. Thank you for checking out my videos. Have a great day.